Hi, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. This video here, I'll be doing a fan, a CPU fan replacement on a gigabit laptop. In this video, I'll be also explaining each of the hardware I'll be taking apart, and I'll show it to you on what to do and explain to you each of the components. So if you have like a hard drive that needs to replace, or maybe the RAM that you're trying to upgrade. Hopefully this video would cover up what I'm planning to do and explain to you uh, the process. Okay, so this is a gigabit laptop. And as you can see, um, my keyboard have two missing keys right here, the W and something here. It might be a, 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 a period or a decimal. So um, let's get started. And this is the Gigabit Aero 15. And some of them, they name it as Gigabit Aero 15X. So I just wanted to share the right model with you. At least you get an idea what's going on. So you actually need to have a Torx 6 screwdriver. This is the Torx screws here. We need to remove the back plate to get into the motherboard. So the Y shape or the triangle shape right here, uh, the screws are a bit longer. So let me see if I can uh, get this screw out. Okay, so the screws are a bit longer. The rest of other screws on the side, they are shorter. So as you can see the comparison, one of the screws are longer, one of one is shorter. The longer one, are there are only three of them. One, two, and three. The rest of it are shorter, so that's alright. If you uh, mix match them, it doesn't have to go in the right position. They are all the same size. Um, if you really like my video, you know, you have been here for a while. Um, and if I help you on, you know, other type of laptop repair or any screen repair any computer related stuff um, I would be really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up you know if you subscribe to the channel uh, it helps me or keep me motivated to make more of these type of videos for you uh, I'm planning to make more of the newer version of the computers so that at least you know in the near future if you happen to buy the same computer and something happened to your computer and you need to upgrade it or you know change out the parts and hopefully you can come back and refer to my video all right so all the screws are removed the next step i'll be doing is um, actually remove the back plate so i get a one of this plastic prying tool you try to pry it open uh, nothing special, there's nothing really holding it. You just got to give it a little push and pull and that would open up the entire back plate. Alright, so there you go. Okay, here you get to see the entire computer and the fan here uh, is giving us a slight grinding noise. What happened is that the ball bearing on the fan the bearings are rusted, so when it spin, the blade are not in an even position. So when it spin, the blade is scraping off the metal. So you can hear the grinding noise to it. Right, and it kind of like stop immediate. The spin is not as smooth comparing to this one. See, as you can see the spin, it kind of like very go smooth on this one. Alright, so the purpose of this is to re, um, of the video is to change out the fan, um, but at the same time I'll explain to you on other parts. So this is your battery right here. There's no screw that, that holds onto the battery. So the battery is actually being taped on using a double-sided tape. And the tape is underneath the battery. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is to remove this type of tapes and try to get 
the battery out okay and for here you just want to pull that connector okay be very gentle do not break the cable alright so this is the connector there's no uh, clipper or anything that holds onto it it just slide it in to install and pull to remove it if you have a bad battery and you're planning to change it you probably need to go look it up GAG-J40 the battery should look something like this nothing really special and the double sided tape is here okay so you just kind of tape onto it alright let's move the battery on the side here as you can see original they come with the DDR4 RAM so this DDR4 RAM is 6 16 gigabyte okay one six so you can add another 16 on this side so you total have a 32 gigabytes RAM and a DDR4 so the PC4 stands for DDR4 RAM to install the RAM you just have to slide it in okay and then push it down the two little clipper on the side you would lock the RAM when you hear the little click to remove it you just have to uh, use the thumb and push on both sides and that would open up the RAM alright so let's get going um, the battery is removed the next thing I'll do is to disconnect the CPU fan power so this is the connector and again there's no clipper that holds on to it it just pretty much slide it in and you push it in okay and there's one here so for both fans all right so let's go ahead and remove this screw so this is a Phillips screw let's remove it there are two screws on this fan and maybe one screw on the left fan okay uh, before you can remove the fan you actually have to remove entire heat sink so the heat sink and the CPU are together if you want to apply a new thermal paste if you feel like that thermal paste is dried up um, you can go ahead and, and apply some of the new thermal paste or maybe a thermal pad so these are what we call the thermal pad okay so the thermal pad uh, you can just you know remove it uh, apply with the new one so I'm saving this original thermal pad I do not have a thermal pad here so I'll be reusing the same one okay so you just have to wiggle a little bit and that's how you remove the entire heat sink and the CPU fan so if you turn it aside you can see that the thermal pad are melted right so it's about time to to have it replaced I just wanted to point that out to you that's what the thermal pad looks like and this is the uh, thermal paste and you can see the thermal paste is all dried up as well so what you want to do is you want to get one of these alcohol wipes okay get the wipes on wipe it clean and apply a new thermal paste same thing you can apply use the wipe and wipe on the CPU and the graphics card okay so the thermal pad is something like this and it would just sit right on top the uh, the chipset so if you notice that some of the chipset is all dried out it's all because the uh, thermal pad is is dry uh, I think you can buy those thermal pads on Amazon or maybe on eBay so what you want to do is you want to have this alcohol wipes and just wipe it off 
All right, so the next step uh, I can explain to you is, oh yeah, let's get back to the fan here. Um, if you're planning to change the fan, like what I'm planning, planning to do. So here, let's move this on the side. So this is the fan and to replace it, you need to have the screw removed. Okay, so there's one here, two, three, four. Okay, so four screws and then the fan come right up. And to look for the fan, you might want to just Google this or you know look it up. It's BS5005. HS dash U2M that might be the model for the fan go look it up and make sure you match the picture that looks like this and of course I will I will have the uh, the link in the description below where you can buy uh, the parts as we go along on this for heat sink you can actually look it up here I think this is the model number or the parts number Go look it up and you can get a replacement on your heat sink. And if you can come back here, you know, kind of like clean out all this dust, you know, the dirt over time, it builds up on your computer, which is not good. You can come back here and clean it up. Okay, so this is how you get the fan on to replace it or to remove it and save the screws because you need them to put it back on that new fan. Now let's come back to the laptop here. Um, this is your Windows, right? This is the NVMe SSD drive. And if your drive is bad and you need a replacement, uh, this is where you're going to get into and replace the solid state drive. If you want to upgrade your solid state drive, saying that you're not enough space and you need more space to it, um, you, you need to buy a larger SSD drive and once you change the SSD drive you actually also need to install Windows 10 on it because the new SSD drive does not come with Windows 10 or any operating system so you would actually uh, need to have the Windows installer or bootable for for that okay so um, I'm not going to show you how to do that on this video here uh, because that is another process on how to install Windows. Uh, you can actually download it from Microsoft website or you can buy one of those uh, Windows 10 license key with a USB stick on it and that would be your installer file. Alright, so here is the thermal pad as you can see, right? So when you buy a new um, hard drive you might want to remove the pad and then transfer it to your new drive okay so let's put this on the side um, there's an additional slot here if you if you notice this slot right here would allow you to have a secondary uh, drive if you want to so if you want to just use one buy a larger one insert here if you want to have a secondary you would have both one here and one here Okay, so let's get going. Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Um, all right, so this is your speaker. Okay, the speaker you can just strictly remove it. There's no screw or whatsoever. Uh, they have this little rubber. This rubber here is stop the vibration on the speaker, so it doesn't give you that the buzzing noise. And this is where the speaker connected. So the right speaker is on this side. And then this one cable here go all along the way and ends up to the left speaker here on this side okay this is your um, Wi-Fi card if you want to change your Wi-Fi card this is where you're going to change it and if you notice that this little thing here is actually your CMOS battery all right the CMOS battery is is, is hidden underneath the Wi-Fi card so if you want to drain the CMOS battery go ahead and disconnect this cable um, if you want to change the motherboard okay so the motherboard here 
uh, is very straightforward. I think it's, it's about to come out already because of the two main screw that we screw on here and the Y screw, right? The, the, the triangle screw, the longer screw. So it's the one that holding down the motherboard. So if you want to change the motherboard, it's very straightforward. Disconnect this cable. This is actually your LCD. Okay, so disconnect this cable. You see this little arrow pointing down? This is where the screws are holding onto the motherboard. So you have one, two, three, four screws. Okay, four screws are still holding onto your motherboard. Once you remove that screw, disconnect the cable on your LCD here. And these are your touchpad, the LED light, you know. Just disconnect those cables. And I believe the keyboard, it is connected on the other side of the motherboard. So when you remove this cable, you want to open the motherboard towards yourself like this way. I believe that's how you need to do it. Okay. And then you can go ahead and change out the uh, uh, the motherboard if you, if you wish. Now, if you want to talk about the keyboard, is this keyboard replaceable? And the way I look at the keyboard, it doesn't seem like the keyboard is a separate keyboard. Okay, this keyboard, it looks like it's all in one piece together. Okay, it's one piece, all, all of them are together. So let me turn it around, at least you get a better view. Okay. So the keyboard, the power button, touchpad, the palm rest. To me, it looks like one piece all together. So if you happen to have a bad keyboard and you want to change out your keyboard, okay, so you technically you need to uh, uh, replace the entire, entire bottom part of it. Because uh, you can see this is not a a screw in keyboard the the manufacturer manufacturer actually uh, have this punch tool to punch on and seal the keyboard entirely okay so the keyboard replacement is not an option all right other than that I hope you enjoy the videos if you have any question comment below um, I really appreciate for the thumbs up until next time take care